Hi everyone, this is Denise with Creates with Love, and I have a, a very special project today. This is for um, some infusible ink coasters. These are going to be given to my mom's sewing friends uh, through her church, and, and others also sew with them. And they do a lot of work for our local community. So as an example, recently they sewed um, hundreds of dog and cat beds for our local adoption shelter. They've made uh, sewed bears and given them to our local sheriff's department to give to kids that may need a little friend in the moment. Um, gosh, they've made receiving blankets uh, for babies in receiving homes. There's just, there's so much that they do to our community. And this is one way that I can help them. They're, they're just a great group of ladies. And so I thought I'd make a couple sets of coasters so my mom can give them each one. Um, I made her a set of reds. These are the, the set that I made her. And um, she mentioned how they loved them and I thought it would be fun to give to them. So anyway, I want my, my mission for this to uh, YouTube tutorial is to show you how I made one of them. It's going to cover uh, slicing, welding, and even contour. I don't want to take the time to show you how I did all four, but I will go ahead and just pick one of them. And you can take the same methods that I use if you want to make your own. Maybe you want to make a crafting one and not so much geared towards sewing, or you might want to change some of the words and, you know, be able to make your own. And this is, doesn't have to be just a coaster, but these, that's why I slice them through is I want the white to show through of the uh, infusible ink coaster blanks. So the only other thing that I wanted to mention before I show you how to do this is it's, it's right now, a lot of people are um, asked to stay home, uh, president's orders and locally our government, um, governor put ours into place last night, you know, to everybody stay home and only go somewhere uh, for medicine or groceries. And so I just wanted to comment a little bit. One of the reasons I created my channel and called it Create With Love is because I really truly believe that when you create something, you're creating it out of love. And often we do this for others, but even when you're doing it for yourself, it's a great example during these anxiety times that when you're creating something, it will really help you get through the moment. So I know a lot of people are struggling. Um, myself, I only listen to enough news just to be abreast of what's current and trusted. And then I leave it alone. Um, I feel that for my family and for my myself, it's best that I concentrate on creating or cleaning, <laughs> believe it or not. So just some ideas and suggestions in case you're struggling or you know someone who is, you can pass on the information. You know, there's you can either create something for someone, you can use this time to organize, you can use this time to clean, you know, uh, gosh, spend time with family, even if it's via FaceTime, or a Zoom meeting, you know, you youngsters set up a Zoom meeting or help set up, you know, by the telephone, you can set up a Zoom meeting with your family and all visit and, and, and help support each other. Um, you can take a walk, even if you can only go into your yard or even if it's only through your window, just try to get in touch with, with nature and be present, right? What do I mean by present? That means just kind of shutting everything that might be concerning you or bothering you. And, and, you know, watch that bird, listen to the bird, you know, just great ideas for any times that we may be struggling. Um, another great example would be make cards. I mean, if you have a Cricut or a Silhouette, or if you just have paper and scissors, you can create cards, um, give one to your postal worker. You know, he's still out there working. Make a card for him. Let him know that you appreciate him or her. Let him know that you appreciate them bringing your mail so that you can be in communication with others during this time. Send cards to hospitals. It doesn't mean you have to go there. You can mail them. And, you know, there's so much out there that people are doing 
for us and then we can try and share their day up. You can just imagine how exhausted and tired they are and how much a card would just bring joy to their life. And so, you know, just things I want to, to share with you, ideas like this, even for assisted living facilities and rest homes, a lot of them have been, I don't hate to use the term lockdown, but you know, they've not been able to have visitors. And I've seen, you know, where people are visiting through the window or now they're asking us to stay home. So maybe it's not advisable to even do that. So send them a card. You know, a card can mean so much. Hand draw a picture and put in it. You know, anything. Give them, make them something that fits in the envelope that, that they can hang in their room or to delight them during this time. There's a lot of uncertainty out there and with uncertainty comes anxiety. And these are all just some ideas that I wanted to pass along. Anyway, I don't want this video to go on and on. I just wanted to be able to do my part to try to share some ideas for y'all and remember to create with love. I always end that on all of my videos because it's what I am passionate about. Um, anyway, so let me get right to showing you how to do the coaster. I am going to go ahead and pick the sewing is my happy place. And so what I'm going to do, I'm going to just so these aren't in our way, I'm going to turn these layers off over here. Whoops, that one I want. Okay. So turn these off and I'm doing that by just clicking on the eye. Now I just have one coaster. And so let me show you what I did. When I make a coaster, this is the actual size of the square coasters that Cricut makes their blanks. They're 3.75. I make this one the size of 3.85 for this type of coaster. And the reason why is I don't want to have to worry. I'm going to right click and choose center front. I want to make sure that when I put my, when I lay my ink on top of the coaster blade that I don't have a little bit, you know, just off to the side because then when you pull your ink off, you're going to have a white little stripe there, right? So I just make the infeasible ink just a hint bigger than the 3.75 and then I just keep it here to test each one that I do. All right, so let me just go ahead and I can turn this off for now. I don't want to delete it. I just want to turn it off over here. Okay, so let's go ahead and I'll show you how to make this coaster. So first of all, what I'm going to do is pick a shape and I want a square and I'm going to come up here. I don't need to unlock it. I just need to put 3.85. I'm going to turn it white just like what my coasters are. All right, there is our starting point. So now I'm going to search for sewing images. So let me just go ahead and go to images and I'm going to go to sewing, hit enter. And for that one, let's see, I'm trying to remember, I have this little cheat sheet here of what all my images are. I think that one was the open scissors. I'm just going to move this over here. So I'm just looking for the open scissors. Those are closed scissors. There we go. Okay, and then what was the other one? Oops. It was the sewing machine. Okay, so I remember this sewing machine was way down at the bottom. If you have the image number, you can also search by the image number, but I happen to know that this one was right here, so I'm going to insert my images. So I've got my sewing machine here. I'm going to go ahead and just make it smaller. And same thing with the scissors. I'm just going to shrink them down. Now, I'm not going to be exact on my sides, but I just want to show you, you know, what I did here. I just, I found the image that I wanted. You know, make it a certain size. And this one happens to have two layers. You can see that right here. So I only want it one layer. I just want the outside, just like I did this one. So I'm going to turn this layer off. So here we go. We have one layer and the sewing machine. It's close enough. And you can change the colors of these if you want, or you don't have to. I'm just going to make them black for now. And make this one black. Okay, so now we're going to add our text. We've got our two images, so I'm going to click on text. And the top one, the sewing and happy place, 
is made by the Carly, I think it's regular, or it's Carly Original Font. Okay, and I just clicked in the wrong place. So I'm going to put caps on, sewing. Okay, here we go. Okay, so I'm going to search Carly here. And it's this one right here. Okay, so that's changed it to sewing. I'm gonna scrunch it in a little bit. That's about that size, close enough for my example. And then I'm gonna click text again. I'm gonna go ahead and do each one since it's already defaulted to Carly now. That's kind of a time-saving half there. Okay, make it smaller. And then text again and put in place. And smaller again. Oops. Okay, close enough. Okay, so these are all great examples of that text. Now I'm going to go to the other text, which is is my. And that one is the, let's see, go to search, A, B, E, N, I, D, A. There we go. And see what I did there? I forgot to hit another text blank. So it changed this one to this one. So we don't want that. So let me hit text again. And I'm going to change it back to Carly. Okay, so make sure you open a brand new text box. There we go. Type your word, which is, is my, and now I want to change the font. So instead of Carly, I want the A, B, E, N, I, B, A. Perfect. All right, so here we go. Make this smaller. Okay, close enough. So, now, all you have to do is line it up how you would like it to go. Let me just move this over here, over here, over here. Get my little square over here so you can see it. Okay, so sewing goes on top. Now, I want this to align horizontally, so the quickest way to do that, in fact, let me just bring this down so it doesn't get in my way. The quickest way to do that is put it about where you want it to go down from the top and then select both items and then align and center horizontally. Okay, so that one's good. Now I wanna move my, I think I wanna move my scissors next. So I'm just gonna put them about where I want them. And then is my, so basically you just line these up however you would like them to go. Happy, and then we'll do place and our sewing machine. So remember not to have it too close to the edge, right? Because you want the ink to go all the way around it perfectly. Looks like I can bring happy up just a little bit more and bring my scissors up just a little bit more. That way I can bring this up. All right, I think I like that. So I happen to know that I'm gonna make these coasters blue. You don't have to change the color of this, but once I attach it, you'll see why it kind of helps get, give you the visual. So I'm gonna do two different shades of blue. Okay, so right now I have everything where I know that I want it to be. Actually, I'm gonna center this horizontally. Now, since I have everything on here, the easiest way for me to center this without selecting everything is select the word happy, hit your control or shift key, and over here, select the blue square. Now only those two things are selected. I can go to align and center horizontally. Perfect. That makes it look so much better. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to weld all of this together because 
you can only slice two layers at a time. So I need to make all of the writing and the pictures one layer. Then I highlight both and then I select weld and then I'll be able to slice. So I'm gonna select sewing, then I'm gonna hold my control or shift key, select is my, select the scissors, select happy, select the sewing machine and the word place. All of those are together and now you can select and I'm still holding down my shift or control key and select weld. Now what that did is it welded everything together. So you should be able to move all items. So these are all together. Go ahead and put it back where you want it. I just did that just to show you. So now we only have two layers, right? So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and center it just since I did move it. So I'm just gonna put center. Perfect, okay. So now you've got your blue coaster here and you've got your weld result, which is right here. You can select both or bo uh, rub your mouse like this. It will select everything. Or you can select here, hit control and select this one. Now they're both selected. And then click on slice. Now what that does is now you're able to take this out and this out, which we won't need these anymore. And there's your coaster, which is just like this one. So I don't have it exact, but you get my drift. So that is how you put together a coaster if you want to have it sliced out for the infeasible ink. So when you make this, the coaster is gonna turn blue, except for where you see white the color of that white coaster will shine through. So this is basically what your coaster is going to look like. So there, I wanted to show you that. Now I did promise that I was gonna show you contour and the reason why, let me go ahead. We don't need this, so I just select them both and then hit X. And I really don't need this, but let me just put it over here for now. I forget which one had it. So this one was just done by using fonts and this button was under sewing for an image. This one here, I did use contour to get this thimble and then I used fonts. This one here was two images and fonts. That's all it was. And I did the same thing that I did with this one. I put all the words, everything on it, how I wanted it. I welded it all together and then I sliced it out of the square. So let me show you contour real quick because this one does have this thimble as a contour. And then I will also give you this file. So if you want to make these coasters, then you will have access to this file so that you can make them. So let me just actually close this because we don't need it. I was just doing that for demonstration. So contour. Let me find the image first. It's actually this one right here of the sewing machine. So I'm gonna click on images. It says sewing and I'm gonna go down. I remember it's pretty far down or I could just type in this image number. Okay, so it's right here. Okay, so I'm gonna insert the image. And if you look real close, let me just kind of move it over a little bit, make this a little bit bigger. If you look right here, here is the thimble that is right here. See that? Sorry. <laughs> There's my thimble and here's the thimble here. So the, the quickest and easiest way to get, I don't want any of this, although keep this in mind because what, if you wanted to make your coasters, you might want some of these images, right? You might want uh, some different choices than what I picked. There's some really cute images in here, some little rulers. You got your surging thread. I mean, gosh, you know, little hangers. Look at the zipper, so cute. A uh, little needle here, a thimble, safety pin. I mean, it's just, you know, dress form. These are just awesome images and you can take any of these out of here by using contour. I love contour so much. So it, it gives you a whole different way to look at images. So what I'm gonna do is make this a little bit smaller because I really don't need to see it. And I'm going to click on contour. 
Now what that does is it brings everything here. You can't see it, but there it is. Okay, and it's at 104%. So I like to bring it down so I can see it. Now, I only want the thimble part and it would take, there's a lot. Every image you see here, including the lines of the zipper and these dots, they are all on this side. So it would take a while to figure out what are the only lines that make this thimble, right? So what I do is I go ahead and hide all contours and then I come through and select what I want. And sometimes it can be tricky. Sometimes you have to click a couple times. Hopefully this is all one take. Nope, see, I don't know why it does that. It, it just has to be so precise. And then you might accidentally get one more, you know. So that looks like that might be all of them. And then so the good thing about it is you can try and try again. So don't be afraid by closing it. You're not going to ruin anything. So hopefully if I close this, I'll have just the thimble. Okay, let me move this so it's out of the way. Okay, so what I forgot to do was I have to get rid of this square as well. So let me hit contour again. Make it smaller so I can actually, so this square right here is right here. I need to turn that off. Okay, so now let me close that. Okay, so let's see, this thimble, do I have everything? And I sure do, it's identical to this one. So there you go. That is your contour. You can make it whatever size you want. Now, I would, you know, you can unlock it if you want and make it a different proportion, but I like to keep it locked because I like it just how it is. Anyway, that is how I got this little thimble right here. Looks like I made it a little bit bigger, but there's the beauty of contour. And, you know, if you wanted to do two of the items that were in there, you would do exactly like what I did and then just get rid of everything except for the two items that you want by just clicking on them. All right. So, and then this right here, you would put just with these words and you would weld it with the words and then slice it out of the square for the coaster. All right. So let me just close this. We don't need it for this. Make this smaller again. Let me close this. Okay. So, right now this project is ready to go i don't need this layer i just kept it there in case i want to come back to this project and maybe make some different coasters right then i'll have this here to use so in order to make the project and i'm going to have to stop my recording because whenever you're using infusible ink you want to make sure that you wash your hands with soap and water which <laughs> because of the virus we're doing a lot lately but anyhow you want to make sure that you don't have any lotions or oils on your hands and make sure they're clean before you start your infused blank project. So I'm going to um, go ahead and send this to my Cricut maker so you can see that process. And then I'll stop my recording and then come back and show you back once my hands are clean. Okay, so I'm going to click on make it. And I like to have these just a little further apart, just makes it easier when it comes time. That's just a personal preference. You can do that however you want. I'm not really losing that much material by moving them away from each other just a little bit. Now, whenever you do an infeasible ink project, you always want to mirror. Okay, so select mirror and then continue. And it's going to select my maker. And I have Infeasible Ink Transfer Sheet already selected. Had I not, I would click on Browse All Material. Okay. Infeasible Ink Transfer Sheet. There it is right there. And then you would select it. And click Done. And I just use default pressure is fine. And all you need is your fine point blade to load into your clamp B and then we're good to go. So like I said, I'll be back with you in just a moment. Alrighty. So I've placed my infeasible ink on my Cricut mat. I'm using the green mat today. I've had these little bubbles in here and I tried to get them out prior and I even used my brayer 
to try to smooth it out and no matter what I did they're still there so it's the first time I've come across the ink with the bubbles so I'll be curious to see what the outcome is with that but with that said there was less bubbles here so I turned my mat upside down it doesn't matter which way you use your mat so that is my reasoning behind that so I'm gonna go ahead and load my mat and again I'm just using the fine point blade and click on go it's going to cut it out for us. Okay, so we want to unload the mat. This is the only place where I can see, and it looks like, like there was not a problem there, so that's good. Okay, so I'm going to flip my mat upside down so I can peel this off. I'm going to peel from this end. And then again, I just want to reiterate that before I before I started, I made sure that my hands were clean and that my mat here is clean. scissors and cut the part of the ink so you can any of this part here you can save for later. So I'm just going to cut around. And if you have a paper trimmer you can use that as well. Okay, and if you've not uh, used infusible ink before, it's a little bit different than weeding regular uh, iron-on or vinyl. So we know that this is the part that's going to go on the coaster. So what I do is I get, I get in it and then peel up right here and just tear one spot to get it going. And then I can just start peeling this part off. And then all that's left to do would be to peel out each individual letter or design. So keep in mind if you wanted to, these letters you could use on a different project. If you're not going to do it right away, I would suggest putting them maybe in a Ziploc baggie, something along those lines. But these are reusable. You're peeling them out for this project to put on a coaster. But you know, if you wanted to, you could use this on something else perhaps a tote bag 
or something like that. So keep that in mind. So to do this part, you kind of want to just get it going, right? And then once, once you have it going, then you just pop it on in. Once you get going, it goes pretty quickly. You'll get the feel for it. You just in some places where it's skinny, you just want to be careful, or where there's like the center of a of a O or something, you want to be careful to not take out the wrong parts of the letter. my mat over here. So we're going to be using, I'm going to be using the big press. Put this here. You want to first lay down a piece of clean white cardstock. And I say to at least have it 80 pound. This is 110 because that's just what I happen to have in stock. All right, and we're going to put the coaster face up. So like I said, I'm do, using the square coasters. This is what they look like. And I'll be able to lay four on one here. And because I'm using my large Easy, uh, easy Press 2, then I'll be able to line up all four coasters at once and just do one press. So these are basically ready to go. The only thing you need to do is wipe off your coaster with a clean cloth, then put this down. Now, I've done these several times before. I find it easier to use a little bit of their heat reflective tape just because this curls so much. And I know it would be difficult for me to try and make sure that this lines up perfect, then cover it with butcher paper, and then be able to put the press down and be confident that something's not going to turn a little bit to the side. So I do use Cricut's infusible ink heat resistant tape. Um, I have some other tape that you can also use that I use sometimes. Your husband might even have some. This is just regular, um, let me see what they call it. They actually call it electronic polyamide tape. So, uh, and it comes in one inch width, half inch width, and this width. So keep in mind that they're basically the same thing. So. If you didn't have the Cricut brand in stock, like especially now if we can't travel anywhere, if you don't have any Cricut tape, you could use um, that tape that I just showed you. So we want to wipe the coaster down, make sure that there's no lint, pet hair, or anything like that. You want to put your design face down on it. And you want to line it up as good as you can. So what I do, what I find helpful with this, is I just set it down and I just line it up the best that I can, right? Because we gave ourselves a little bit of room so that we wouldn't have any white spots or white lines around. So all you want to do is just make sure that your entire coaster is sitting on top of the blue part. And then you can go ahead and use your tape. Now, like I said, I'm, I'm using Cricut's tape, and I happen to have one of these um, older versions of a tape dispenser. This one is made by Scotch. It's got sand in it that weights it in a non-skin bottom. I highly advise using one of these. It's so much easier than trying to peel your tape off of just one of these. 
Anyhow, so let me move this down so you can kind of see what I'm doing here. Okay, so once I know that I have this lined up, I'm going to move this just slightly down. Okay. And the thing is, these this really isn't going to come around and stick, right? So you can see kind of the dilemma of why I'm using the tape. And it doesn't take much tape. So I put it on that side, and then I wrap it around and just put it like that. And then I come over to this side. Make sure I didn't pull it. So make sure I didn't pull it past that. And then take your next piece of tape. And pull it straight down. So you could do all four sides. I'm just going to do two. Just from experience, once I put the weight of the press on, it's going to be just fine. So just take one more quick look, make sure you can see blue all the way around, and then you're good to go. So set it down, coaster facing up, ink transfer facing down. So same thing, I'm going to wipe this off, and grab my next one. Okay, so my heat easy press 2 is the one that I have and it's heated up. You want to do, if you're using the easy press 2, you want to do 400 degrees for 60 seconds. No pressure is needed and you want to do a cold peel because these will get hot. Not as hot as the, or I should say it cools off quicker than the ceramic coasters. They do get very hot so please make sure that you let them cool before you take the plastic and the tape back off. So, we have our easy press mat, then we have cardstock, then we put our coasters face up, the ink transfer face down, taped if you feel like you need it, and then you want to cover your project with butcher paper. So everything is protected. This cardstock protects your easy press mat, this protects your press. And then you just want to make sure when you put the press on that you don't move it at all. You don't want to slide it or anything like that. Even though you'll see me holding it, I'm not putting any pressure. I'm just keeping it because the cords are so strong that I've seen the presses move just a little bit. And I don't want to mess up my product. So I'm only going to be holding on to it for 60 seconds, which is really no big deal. So I just have to make sure, I mean, like I said, I'm using my extra, extra large one which is plenty enough room to be able to get all of these coasters in one press. Okay? So you can also do one at a time if you have a smaller press. I've done that as well too when I didn't feel like dragging my big one out. I've just done one at a time, which is kind of fun to do as well. So don't think you have to have a big one just to do this particular product or project. All right. So I'm going to grab it, set it straight down, and then hit the timer. See what I mean about the cords? <laughs> They're so strong. <laughs> I'm going to make sure nothing got bumped there. Kind of hold the cords. 
so we'll have a little bit this time. Okay. Perfect. Straight down and press go. I already had the timer set for 60. And pick it straight up. And you can go ahead and remove your butcher paper. And then this is where you want to let it cool. I can see it already separating underneath where, you know, it is done. But the thing is, it's so hot, you don't want to touch it. So I'll come back in a little bit when it's cool. So they're coming down and I you know I can touch them and keep my hand there so it actually feels good because my hands are cold okay so let's go ahead I want to make sure the bottom's okay okay it is so you can see why you definitely want to put your cardstock down because you can see where the ink went a little bit over the edge right because we've made it slightly bigger so that we wouldn't have white stripes so definitely protect your map by doing that You want to be careful. This cork is kind of soft, so be careful when you're picking at the uh, at the tape. If you have a hard time with your fingernail, maybe grab an X-Acto knife just to get the corner of it going. But I got this side. All you really need is one side that you can get to, because you can literally just peel it right off. And there we go. Look how awesome that is. Oh my gosh, I love it. Sewing commends the soul. And it certainly does. It's beautiful. Okay, let me take this off. is my happy place. Ah, these are just lovely. May your bottom always be full. <laughs> One last one. She works with her hands in delight. That's one of my favorites. Alrighty. I really think the ladies are going to love this. I have another set to make that I'm going to do off camera. And this was this blue with feasible ink here. And then this is the next set I'm going to make. So I'm going to make two sets, same coasters, and this set's going to be in light blue. So I think the ladies will like them. And what do you think? Okay, guys, as you can see, these are beautiful. So I hope that you guys like them. Let me know if you're going to make a set. And... What other kind of ideas would you have to put on coasters? Also, I have a Facebook site called Creates With Love. If you want to post a picture of your project anytime, feel free and share ever to everybody what you create with love. All right, everybody, take care and be safe and happy.